Hey guys and welcome to my guide on how to create a cornerstone for invader farming while also being able to use it to farm while AFK. This is a slightly tweaked version of a forum post that I will link to in the description below. However, that post is a little bit old and that is why this is a more up-to-date version that I have created. This guide is also going to be 100% live, so I am sorry if it is not as professional as my guides usually are, but I find it much easier to explain it while doing it live and follow along. And this is actually what your cornerstone is going to look like as the end result. We can hop in here really quick. I am going to build another one of these, not the entire thing, but I am going to do the most important parts with you guys. Like, I won't build this entire huge wall again, because that takes forever. But this is what it's going to look like from the outside and the inside before we get on to another one. And look at that, we already have an invader in here. But uh, we are a novice, so let's just one-shot him really quick. And this is going to be the end result, but let's get into actually building another one of these things. Okay, so first thing is first, we need to create another cornerstone for this. I do not recommend it as your main cornerstone, as it is really hard to get into. So I would just recommend making an entire different one. You can name it like I did AFK Trap, or you can do AFK farm whatever you want to call it you can call it bob it doesn't matter just create another cornerstone or you can use your main doesn't matter and what you're going to do is you're going to delete the entirety of it destroy all of it i use uh big bombs because they do the most block damage but you're going to destroy the entirety all the way down to the bottom so let's fast forward through that Alright, so you will know when you reach the bottom because the bottom is unbreakable and it kind of evens out at the bottom. Now you can see it is kind of messed up because you're using big bombs and it's blowing up the walls around you. So what I recommend after doing the most of the work is to go back and find another cornerstone so you can clean up those extra little spots that you have missed. You can either use just normal bombs or you can use your laser mancy to do that. And just finish that up and we will see, I will see you guys once I am done cleaning up the rest of this. Alright, now that we are completely down to the bottom, you can just stop here if you don't mind the floor. It's going to be covered with lava anyways. Or you can do if you saw at the beginning of the video like mine where I created my channel logo on the bottom. I wouldn't recommend going w more than one layer higher though. So if you're going to do a design, just do it on this top layer or this bottom layer right here. And don't go any higher than that. But like I said, it's going to be covered with lava. So that is completely up to you. Alright, for this next step, I recommend placing your cornerstone in a plot that doesn't have a K or any empty space around it as you could place blocks against the walls and it will count as your own cornerstone just like that. Those actually count even though we're placing them against the wall of the already natural world. It does count as your own cornerstone. Okay, so this next step is probably the most confusing of the entire build and I'm going to try to explain it the best as I can. So it doesn't matter if you designed a floor like my first build or you left it blank like this build. Whatever floor you left it as, you're going to go one up from that floor. So this is the bottom most you can get. So I'm going to go one up from here. If I built a floor like a design, I would go one more up because the floor would be one higher like that. And one higher would be right there. So I hope that made sense. Just one floor. You're going to leave one row empty from whatever floor you are on. So one row. And then for this first row, we're going to build on the odd column. So you're going to place one block every two blocks starting odd from an odd number so we started at number one so that's number one this is number two we leave number two blank we're gonna go number three then we're gonna leave four blank and then we're gonna go number five and you're just gonna skip one every uh every other block and you're gonna do that until you go all the way in a circle so since we're going like that you are going to leave a space right there because it goes one blank one blank one blank one and you're gonna do that in an entire circle let's speed it up really quick 
All right, so we did that entirety. Remember, it's going to alternate in the corners because it is an odd number. You're skipping one, so that is perfectly fine. It's not going to be completely symmetrical. It's going to go from the first spot. That corner is going to be blank. That corner is going to be filled. That corner is going to be blank. That corner is going to be filled. So now what you do is you skip another row, just like you did from the first row. You left this entire row blank. You're going to leave this entire row blank, one above the odd number. Then you're going to go even, so it's alternating. So you're going to go skip one, go two, skip three, go four, skip four, five, go six. And you're going to do that once again in an entire circle. Once again, the corners are not going to be symmetrical. It is going to be a little off because the cornerstone is an even amount of spaces. It is a, a 16 by 16, I believe, maybe 18 by 18. I don't remember, but uh, you guys know the dimensions. And you're just going to do that all the way in a circle. And you're going to do that the entire way until you get to the very next row from the cornerstone sign. So you're going to stop at this row, touching, not right there, <laughs> right there. All right, so touching the bottom of the cornerstone sign, not behind the cornerstone sign, the bottom of it. So you're going to do that once again, follow the same steps. Steps one through three is the exact same thing all the way to the top. So now that we did the even number, we would skip one row and go back to odd and then do that. You know, we'll go odd, skip another row and then go even. I recommend having these blocks right here. What are they called? They're in my inventory. Uh, scaffolding. That's what I use because the scaffolding makes it easier. You can just keep climbing up, go in a circle, climb up, go in a circle. However you got to do it, that's how you're going to do it all the way to the top.
All right, so this is what it is going to look like once you are completely done. Remember, one layer lower than the cornerstone sign, so the bottom of the cornerstone sign is touching the topmost block of this alternating block method. And also, I forgot to mention that you can just use your movement speed and if you angle your camera right, you can actually just keep walking forward and place blocks. I forgot to mention that instead of using scaffolding. Scaffolding actually takes a lot longer. Also, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, before you even start this out, you do want 92 horizontal launch pads and 12 updraft blocks. As you can see on my hotbar on the right side, I did forget to mention that. But make sure you have those before you start this build because that is what you need. But moving on to the next step, let's get rid of that guy so he doesn't bother us. Now what you're going to do is you're going to come in one layer further from the alternating blocks. So once again, one off the ground, so don't place on this layer. This layer is completely empty. This entire build leaves this bottom layer completely empty. And once again, if you have a design, that is going to be one block above your design. But from the bottom most part of your alternating blocks, you're going to start building a wall around. And you're going to do that wall... It could be anything. Most people use glass. I use glass as you saw from my build. It could be any type of block, but what you're going to do is you're just going to build a wall around the entirety of these blocks. So you can just keep building up like this and then keep doing that all the way around. That's the way that I do it just because it's easier for me to just keep jumping and placing blocks and then I just keep going in a circle all the way around. And you're going to do this once again to the topmost layer of your uh, alternating blocks all the way around so let's once again speed through that process this is probably going to take longer than the alternating blocks but i will see you guys when i am done Alright, so once you have built your surrounding walls, you're going to make a ring on the outmost layer of your cornerstone just above the alternating blocks. This layer is the layer that your cornerstone sign is on, so the blocks should be touching the back of your cornerstone sign. So let's speed through this. Now in the four corners of this outmost ring, you will be placing your updraft blocks so you can get into your cornerstone from the outside later on. So let's do that really quick. Alright, so once you have placed your outer ring, you're going to come one more block inside the cornerstone and place another ring 
This time, you're going to be using horizontal jump pads, only leaving the four corners open. So once again, you can place four updraft blocks so you can leave your cornerstone later on. So let's speed through that really quick. All right, so this is what it is going to look like once you are completely done with the outer layer. And then we are going to be moving into the room where you'll be AF King, also commonly referred to as the killing room. So you're going to want to come in six blocks from the corner. So I count one, two, three, four, five, and then six. And then from there, you're going to go one, two, three, four. And then you're going to want to build a four by four little platform, which is going to be four blocks off the ground. So I just have this as a reference so I can see. So this counts as one block off of the ground. Then I'm going to go two, three, four. So, all right, so now we count one, two, three, four. That is where our platform is going to be. So we just come along the outer layer right here, uh, do four by four, one, two, three, four. And then we're going to do that all the way around. One, two, three, and then four. And then one, two, three, four. And then we can destroy all of this because this is all irrelevant now. And that is going to be your base platform. You have to fill it in because it is going to be where you are standing for the most part. So let's fill that in. And we are so far done with that one. So let's clean all of this up right here. All right, so from here, this is where you're going to be standing. We're going to go two blocks high. So go two blocks high and then one block out so go one block out like that and then we're going to go once again in a four by four but it's not it's not four by four it's like four by six or something weird i don't know the dimensions but we're going to go in an outer layer one out from the four by four that we currently have so what is it a five by five or five by four i guess i don't know we'll see <laughs> um so let's keep going around it's kind of hard to get it just right because the building in this game is well you guys know how the building is in this game. All right, there, there, and there. Okay, so we are done with the outer ring and we're going to take off the four corners, just like normal. So remove all four of these. And now this is going to be your outer ring. You're not gonna fill this in at all. The purpose for this is so that way you can, whenever a mob has like the cyclone or whatever pulls you in, it won't pull you down. You can also see the loot, so you can use glass flooring like I do in my main build, so you can see the loot, and then you can hold D and collect the loot. You can also fish from here if you need lava fish, or if you just want to make more flux per hour while AFK farming. That is the whole purpose of leaving this spot blank, and it is a pretty smart idea. Once again, it, all credit goes to uh, the original poster. This is the original killing room that they have come up with, and it is so far the best that I have seen. All right, but from here, you're going to want to go three blocks high. So let's go one, two, and then the third block is actually going to be horizontal launch pads. This is going to be your roof. So this is going to be a little annoying to create. Uh, so we're going to go in a three by three pattern. So you want to make sure that you are not or you're covering your entire outer ring, but nothing more than that. So let's go one, two. This is really hard to get down uh, if you are not good at building like I am. So let's actually do that so we can do this right here. So one, two. So right now that's a two by three. We need to go one more layer out. Maybe we can build a little block right here so we can get up. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. <laughs> I'm very bad at building and it did take me a while to do it on my first try. Let's just do that, and then we can come right here. That makes more sense. Okay, so let's do that. Then we can come right here, place this one down, touch that, there we go. Touch that one, that one, and then we can fix this one. All right, so you're gonna wanna do that all the way around. You're gonna wanna face away from the center, obviously, so when they jump on your head, they move away. So now that we have that one done, we're gonna wanna go this way, because again, we're going away from the center. Once you have your first one down, it gets a lot easier, because now you have a base to go off of. So we're gonna go one row of three, two rows of three, make sure they are all facing away from the center, and then three rows of three. So it gets a lot easier once you have your first layer down. So let's go once again, one row of three, move along the outer layer, two rows of three, and then three rows of three. This is why you need so many horizontal launch pads because uh, you need a lot just for your roof. So there's one row of three, two rows of three, and then the final row of three will be right 
here. And for the most part, this is your base room. Let's kill this guy so he stops being annoying. All right, so from here, you're going to want to go from the four corners that you left empty. I like to do this, uh, just do that, like that. We're gonna get rid of these blocks, but it makes it so I don't mess up just in case I'm like being blind or something. This is a much easier way for me to do it. So just keep doing that. And the purpose of this is we're going to need a way out, right? All right, so there we go. So we have our four corners. We know exactly these are the four corners because that's how building works. And then in the corner of your walls, opposite of your little platform that you're going to be standing on, you're going to fill those corners up with updrafts, just like how you did on the outside. And you're going to want to do this so you have a way out, just in case you need to get out. Maybe someone's trolling and blocks your lava flow. There's got to be some way to get out. And then from here, because this, they will stay right here forever. An invader will sit here forever. That is why we have some more launch pads. Eight to be exact. Because you're going to want to build launch pads facing away. Because the invaders are so big that they have to have one foot stepping on one block and another foot stepping on another block. So if they turn towards you, they're going to hit a launch pad and then jump. And they're just, they're just going to get sucked into the bottom. So it makes sure so that way invaders don't get stuck here because they will literally stand here forever if you do not have these launch pads. So make sure you cover all four corners with these. Just one more layer. And then that is literally it for the entirety of this killing room. This killing room is a lot simpler than, or a lot faster to build than this entire thing. And this is how it's going to look like from above. Now what you can do is you can put, uh, you can put the... Elysium flask fillers, I forget what they're called, uh, all around here. You can put what I do personally for the uh, chests and the deconstructor. Uh, the reason why the other build is kind of outdated is because now we have a system where if you hold or if you press E, it's going to activate the nearest thing near you. And the original post that I was following for this has their personal chests and their deconstructors on this outer ring. What I do is I put the Elysian uh, filler. I, I, I it, the name escapes me, but I put them on the four corners. I'll show you in the later build because I'm about to go over to my main build right now. I put them on the four corners and then from right here, let's pretend that these are a chest and a deconstructor. I put them out there. That way when you're right here and you hold E, you don't accidentally press them. And then you can still jump up here and use them. So don't put blocks underneath them. Just straight up put them. I wonder if I can show you. This is a good example. I don't have any in my inventory, obviously, or I just do it straight up. But you can use these as an example. They will stick there even without a floor beneath them. So just put them there and then we can do that on the four corners. Make sure they're in the dead center so they're even and makes more sense. They're more symmetrical, all that stuff. And then when you're right here, like I said, you hold E. You can even be up against the wall. You hold E. It's not going to work, but you can jump up here and then use it. So that's the way I do it. I find that's the more updated way. It's the only way that really works because if you have them right here, I can just show you as an example. If you have them right here and you hold E, you're going to use them at some point. If you're looking this way, you're going to hold E. You have to look away. But if they're on every single corner, whatever way you look, there's going to be one right there. So that's why I do that. Uh, you can do it whichever way. Again, this entire build, you can do in your own way. This is just the way that I do it. So now that we're done with that, that is for the most part the build, the entirety of the build. The only thing you have left now is to go up. You're going to leave this corner and you're going to go up from here. You're just going to keep going up and up and up and up and up and up, and up until you can't anymore. Just keep going and going and going until it literally does not allow you to build anymore. There is a limit to how far you can build up, and you're going to do that around the entirety of the build. And that is it for the build. That is why we have these. I'll show you how you would get out. I actually need to build a little corner right here. Just Or I could just show you with my main build. But the reason why you have these corners as the uh updraft blocks is because you need a way out and a way in if you're building these corners you can do this this is how you get out i just want to show this really quick as the last spot so you hold your updraft from there and then you're going to move one block forward and go up there the reason why we have the launch pads right here is because no matter what we're going to have this layer underneath the launch pads and if we don't have those launch pads there they're going to get stuck up here just like i was explaining down here the ai is designed to where it will not go off of cliffs they will be stuck there forever that's why we have these launch pads and then that's why we need the updraft blocks to get out because that is the only method unless you use water which water would just get rid of the lava so it is literally the only way you can get out and that is why we do this so let's move on to my main build and i will show you what it would look like 
in the end. So this is with a full glass blocks. This is like a nice version with a design at the bottom. So now that we have built it, we can get in from here. That's why we leave the corners out because then it makes it so you can get in and out because you're going to be pressed against the wall the entire time. I've tried different ways. It's the only way that I can get out. And then we have the the blocks right here so when they fall in they're gonna hit the block they're gonna fall in they're gonna fall on the roof they're gonna hit the roof and then they're gonna fall in if they hit the roof and then accidentally hit this they're gonna turn and then knock that way and then they're gonna keep going until eventually eventually bam they fall in and then we have the nice design at the bottom see even with the design one block higher we still leave one block on the bottom no matter what then we have a glass layer so we can see the lava as it's coming down. You can't really see it. Right here you can kind of see the glass blocks that I use as my alternating method. If you can see that, I use dark green glass blocks. I have a little mag rail just in case people want to ride around a mag rider. And then I have my, what are they called? Rejuvenation stations. There we go. See, I have my rejuvenation stations on the four corners and then the personal chest and loot collectors on the outside so that is it for the build let me show you how you even become this is just a build for normal farming you can sit down here and farm forever let me show you how you actually get to afk with this map or this build all right so to be able to afk with this build you're going to need lava because lava is the only thing that can really afk kill anything in the game without your input to kill it so the only place you can get lava because you can't place it in your corner zone you're not allowed to place lava blocks in your corner zone is through the dragonfire peaks biome most people go to u8 you can do whatever uber world you can reach highest as you can get try not to go to u9 because not as many people are going to join on you because not as many people can enter u9 so u8 is the perfect biome but if you can't go to U8, just use whichever one is lower. And you have to be in a primordial world, or a prime world, not a primordial world. Because invaders do not spawn in primordial worlds. So you can't just go to the fire primordial world and expect to find a bunch of invaders and a very easy cornerstone plot. So once you have got to U8, or whatever is the highest you can get to besides U9, up to U8, you find a Dragfire Peaks biome, you had to find a cornerstone plot next to lava. Now this is just one roll of the dice. First, you have to find a cornerstone plot near lava in a Dragonfire Peaks biome, so that could take a long time in itself. And then what you also want is to make sure that there's no cave near it, no, no empty spaces. Just like when you're building your cornerstone, you don't want any empty spaces because mobs can spawn in that empty space because it's near enough to you. And also, they will stay there forever without touching the lava because they're outside of your cornerstone and the lava will only be on the inside. So this is a perfect cornerstone plot. There was two lava sources next to the cornerstone plot and there was zero empty spaces on the inside walls so this is perfect what you're going to do from here is you're going to now to get to the lava into your cornerstone because it doesn't move the lava will not move uh just by building your cornerstone right there just because there's empty space near it doesn't mean it's going to move what you have to do now is you have to delete the blocks next to the lava and now the lava if we can see right here it's going to start moving in there we go you can see that little spot right here it's now moving into my cornerstone so we're going to do that on both sides since we do have two spots the more spots the better if you only find one lava source touching your cornerstone it might only fill up half of your bottom floor of your cornerstone and that doesn't really work out because then the mobs like the ai is designed will not walk into lava on purpose so you do want to find a cornerstone plot that has two lava sources that way it wraps around your entire build and what we can do easily to get in since we are the cornerstone owner we can just respawn and there you go this is why most people build with glass so you can see where the lava is going to come from and so you can make sure that's going to wrap around your entire cornerstone since they're on two different corners eventually once they get down to the bottom it will be wrapped all the way around so that is it that lava is going to get down to the bottom and all you need to do is sit right here you don't have to do anything you have to make sure every 19 minutes just anything before 20 minutes every 20 minutes you get and then move your mouse you don't have to click anything you don't have to press anything just you just have to move your mouse and then that's count as an input and you won't go afk so every 20 minutes come back move your mouse make sure if you have like sound on you can hear a stellar drop because stellars do drop sometimes if you have high enough magic fight and then you just hold e pick it up and you are good you have your personal chest you have your loot collector it is a perfect afk farm and you don't have to use it for afk either you can just if you don't find any lava and you're getting tired of it you can just wait for them to spawn and then just kill them at the bottom Either way, that is how you build it. Once again, I am sorry if this was a little longer and a little more drawn out. This wasn't scripted or anything, so I couldn't, you know, I couldn't 
avoid all the miss spoken stuff and i'm still doing it now like I'm, I'm doing it now so i hope you guys still enjoyed it and i hope you guys enjoy the afk farm for the ladybug invaders whatever invaders come in the future and i will see you guys next time